fight, fight, fight. Dun, 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 dun. I was dancing. <laughs> we have another wine tasting face off video today. We have some super classy, super expensive Italy versus Slovenia Bordeaux blends. Learn all about it. Shireen's going to be tasting them blind in this video. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel, the show that helps you drink adventurously so you can expand your palate, expand your mind. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. Hi, I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome back to the show. I am super excited. Now, like, this show is for, for us. The show, I, I, we do a lot for you. This show is really for us because <laughs> we are drinking some class, and I probably will not even spit. We are drinking some classy, classy wines today. A lot of people like our wine tasting face-off videos. A lot of you like them, so we're doing another one. This time it's Italy versus its neighbor. Slovenia. Slovenia. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you know, Italy, well, world-renowned for some, you know, some of the most delicious, some of the greatest wines of the world. Neighboring Slovenia producing some serious juice, too. Watch out, don't knock that down. But you're right. I'm not you, you know. And, you know, Italy is full of, you're right, you're right, I'm clumsy. <laughs> Italy is full of, you know, all these unique indigenous grapes, so what, but we're going to taste Bordeaux blends today. Whether you think, you know, French grapes in Italy should be there or should not be, it does that's the discussion for another time. Regardless, they're really good Bordeaux blends in Italy. Yeah, everywhere in the world. Yeah, Slovenia too. So that's what we're doing. We're matching up. Slovenia always doesn't have the same grapes as Italy, although they do share some because they're borders. But we're going to do Bordeaux blends, serious Bordeaux blends, super high scores in international press. Some of these wines are iconic worldwide, some more on a regional level. You ready to get started? Let's go for it. I'm very excited. <laughs> I have no clue what we are tasting at all. And I can't just, I keep smiling when I look into the, the camera because your hair is kind of like growing right to the very edge of the frame. And it's so funny. We should play, <laughs> we should play that Delaney Gag Gag song. I'm on the edge. <laughs> okay, so. Let's, Tone deaf. Okay, so. Let's, uh, let's get to tasting some of these wines. Shireen saw maybe a couple that came in, but there's been so many wines coming in and out. You really no, have. I don't pay attention seriously. Okay, so what did I do here? I actually used my Corvin Model 6. I Corvin all five wines into separate glasses, let them decant for about 45 minutes, put them in the box behind me so Shireen can't see. You're gonna taste, you're gonna tell me what you like, and then we're gonna do the big reveal. Okay, let's get started here. First, uh, oh, by the way, we do have we do have a, a discount code for all Coravin uh, systems and accessories. I'll put it in the description box. You can get 10% off. That's what helps make these tastings possible because these are some super expensive wines. Let's go for it. You ready to rock? Wine <laughs> number one. Now, all these are Bordeaux grapes, grapes that are permitted in Bordeaux. Uh, not all the same vintages, and this is, you know, not about comparing vintage, it's not all the same blends, but just, we're just talking about quality here. Italian wine. You think it's Italian, huh? Why, why do you think that? Because it's a little bit balsamic. It has, it's a little bit, you can see that it's a little bit rustic. To, I, I may be wrong. Tobacco. Yeah. Um, this is really good. It smells, but you, is the rusticity bothering you? No, no, no. To me, it's to me. I may be wrong, like I said. But oh, sorry, that's a fly. The, the, it, it, to me, this is like classic Italian wine with this, like, you know, it has a little bit of volatile acidity, but it expresses itself so nicely uh, on the nose with like this balsamic quality. Serious though. Yeah. Serious stuff. It smells me. pretty thick, concentrated on the nose, walnutty. I love the tannins here. Tannins is all over the mouth, but. Sits kind of in the middle quite heavily. Um, more firm, just a little bit of astringency. Great tannins management for me. Uh, it shows maybe a little bit of bottle age, dark dark cherry fruits, mm. uh, tobacco, cedar, serious stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, is that a good start? That's a very good start. So, this must be quite an expensive one. <laughs> I mean, often, you know, I always talk about expensive or expensive oak management, and sometimes people ask me what I mean by that. I think when you taste a lot, you also can kind of get it. Um, it's just really subtle flavors, good tannin, sweetness, not too oxidized. All the wines are all the wines are expensive, and you we have no stake in this, right? You, some of the wines you could hate. These are really all highly rated wines. Some you can hate, some you can love, right? What are you thinking? This one is more less oxidized than the first one. Mm -hmm. It tastes a little bit, maybe even 
potentially a little bit cooler it's got so the first one kind of expresses itself with like this um sweet like tobacco and and a, a little bit of this savory quality that i'm only guessing that it comes coming from oak but this one leans towards more vanilla uh, fruity cherry this shows side. a lot more finesse to me than this one this one's a little burlier yeah. shows a little bit more finesse classic bordeaux you know style nose for me the That's tannins and the, and are super slick on this okay i think the first one is a more expensive wine as well you think so okay i think let's move on to number three okay it can get better though i think when i was corvetting these i tried not i didn't smell them i didn't smell them in the glass because i wanted to wait for this i do know what they are shireen doesn't but the aromas were just filling the room and i was like damn this is gonna be a serious tasting let's give this a smell here nice i like this a lot it's got a little bit of capsicum this is more bordeaux bordeaux i would just say it's cooler to me more capsicum more leafiness more greeniness Peppery. This is really peppery compared to the previous two. This is really bringing some uh, serious thunder here. I really like this one. Elegant. Um, tannins. Uh, so the first one has a stronger tannin. The second one doesn't have much tannin at all. It's more smoothed out. This one has a perfect level for me. This is really sits in the middle palette. More bottle development. More fruit. More earthiness more earthiness and cool climate like capsicum mm. no light notes mm. right this is very complex wine let's move on to wine number four are you liking this so far by the way mm, i'm very quite blown away by the third one really yeah okay number four here let's give this a go oh i like this oh tomato leaf mm -hmm. type deal a little bit elder heat though this one a little bit in a not not bad like way. dried fruit sweet, yeah. maybe it's quite sweet but it's yeah leans to it I'll hit it tomato this is cig almost this is almost like if I took if I I smoke cigars maybe once a year if I took the ashtray and I kind of licked the ash oh it tastes like cigar you, you agree right mm -hmm. that, is that it's a like bad thing or a good thing uh, I think this is a wine that a lot a lot a lot of people will like I know all my Singaporean <laughs> friends will like it this is their classic wine because. My friends in Singapore, a lot of them love like Amarone, bigger wine, and this is like what Croatians say, Toyo to. This is it. it. Oh, you like it a lot? No, I prefer the third one still. This is not my wine, but I can see why a lot, a lot of people would like it. This palette is a lot more finesse than the nose. The nose, I would think, would just be a bomb, right? Yeah. Wine number five. How fun is this, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that no it's not fun or? no it's fun it's just <laughs> you're funny <laughs> okay and i spilled it i'm a handy <laughs> sorry uh okay um... i i just don't like messy table i can't eat from messy table i can't drink from messy table for me aesthetic is really important when it comes to food and wine mm. oh interesting interesting in a good way or a bad way you know when this people is... say interesting it's not always good uh, yeah imagine if someone comes to you and say oh i think you're an interesting person or oh. like oh you're a nice oh person. you're not like your grossest <laughs> guy oh you're a nice he's a nice no, guy nothing oh. better to say awesome awesome this is a, a, this is the oakiest out of all in a sense that the oak comes on very clearly as like something cherry and toasty the toasted oak comes through in a good way it's not uh, over oak to me i think the fruit can handle I get a lot of uh, black plum, red raspberry, black cherry type of flavors. Interesting. Good? Not I good. I quite like it, you know. I wasn't so interested in the nose. I, I'm quite, um, I don't really like wine that expresses this like toasty, dry wood kind of smell. But taste is really good. Um, more finesse. Nice tannins on the finish. I really can kind of feel the oak tannin. We can't tell, we can never tell, but there is this filler on the finish with very nice tannins on the finish. A little bit dry. Oh, you have to put them in order. Which ones you prefer? Oh, uh, one to five, really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Make her work a little bit. <laughs> I love number three. It's so complex, so elegant. It's hard to it's hard for you to decide, huh? All the wines are good, huh? Alright. Ready to reveal? What what's in sitting back and relaxing? What's in fifth <laughs> Cause the wine is so good, right? What's fifth place for you? Number four. So in fifth place. 
Number four, Yakinchich oh, Carolina shit. Select 2013, the most expensive Slovenian wine on the market, oh. 170 US dollars, 2011, got uh, 93 points. Robert Parker, we've had every vintage of this wine. Come on, I think you're, you're a little bit hard on this wine, but I think it was, but, but it was still good it, because you're least favorite. It's still good though. Like I said, personally, it's not a wine for me, but I, I thought that this is absolutely, among all of this wine, this would have been the crowd favorite. This is- oh, you, you did say it's a crowd favorite. So this wine actually in a blind tasting in uh, China beat out Masetto. Uh, beat up Petrus, that type of stuff, because it's 93% Merlot, 7% Cabernet Sauvignon, not made every vintage. I think this is only the fifth or sixth vintage. Damn, That's you know what? what? If I had not tasted that wine, I would have been biased, because I really like this wine in general. Yeah, wine the, tasting. Um, yeah, this is cool though. Okay, what's the next one? What's in, what's in fourth place for you? This is no shame. I have to let you know. This is no shame in this game because these are all pedigreed wines. Mm. Okay, so no, I enjoy, I, I, so I, oh. okay, let's go to the next one. What's what's your next place? Number five. Number five is num is in your. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be drunk by the end. <laughs> so uh, here we go. What, what kind of score do you think it is? Don't look. Everything is in a ninety degree. I don't know what it is. The wine is getting better. I'm getting more and more tipsy. <laughs> this was just recently named number one in Forbes Italy top 10 reds with Bordeaux, Italy, and everything. This is the Marian Simcic Apoca Trubno Cru 2015. 100% Merlot. I am not cheating because Petrus, some of the right, great right banks are 100% Merlot. Uh, 50, around 50 US dollars. This is the one that's the most oaky, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I could kind of tell. In a good way, in a good this was This was really, really good stuff. I think yeah, it was, was six, sorry, 60 US dollars, 100% Merlot. Okay. 60 US dollars, no, that's great. Yeah. No, oh, that's really great. Don't look. Okay, I, what? What's your next? What's your next wine? Number one. Number one was in third place. The most rustic one out of all. I I didn't cheat with this. I wanted to add Movia Valico Valico Ardici, but it has Pinot Noir in it, so I couldn't. So number one is in Italian. So on, number one Italian. is Italian. This is the one I had to put in foil because I showed you on the video earlier. So number one, not score, coming in at. 50 US dollars, 80% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Cabernet Franc. It Classic. is not Italian. It is oh, the Eddie Simchips oh, Do shit. It Lex 2015. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the iconic wines. These are all three iconic Slovenian <laughs> wines. This right here. Oh, I won't do be it allowed. like 16. It's not 15. I won't so. be allowed to go back to Slovenia. <laughs> no, 16. Uh, this is kind of, it's so funny. It's 60 bucks. They make two higher reds, Cozana, Merlot, and Colo, so they're about 150 bucks. I actually really like this wine a lot. The yeah. rusticity, I everything. I, I like the bully. Yeah, I thought it was a, so. From a professional perspective, when I take myself out of the picture, right, I actually think Carolina would uh, be higher than Edison Chich. But my personal preference is Edison Chich. No, man. Ah, oh, this is hard. <laughs> okay, so number. So. Okay, I think this one will be one point lesser than all of this. Okay. Even though I like this better. You have to hurry. I feel like I'm getting this one. Okay, <laughs> next one. Number two. So number two was your second favorite. Number two, iconic, iconic wine produced by the late Giacomo Takis, who created Sasakaya, Tignanella, and Solaya. Oh, this is the 2018 Fattoria Le Pupile Safredi, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot Merlot from Morema. 96 points, Robert Parker, 60 to 90 US dollars. You know, I thought you would like more than this because I think the tans are super Oh, I 100% have no doubt number three is my favorite. So, is, okay, that number is my three. Favorite. Number three was what kind of score you would give? Uh, at least 90, I think 94 points probably. Nine, okay, so this is a classic from Northern Italy, the Tenuta San Leonardo, San Leonardo 2015, six, it's, uh, about six, uh, it's about 60 US dollars. Really? This is 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Carmenere, mm -hmm. 10% uh, Merlot, six, around 60 bucks. Here's the kicker, 95 points Venice, 94 to 97 points Robert. 
Parker's wife. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I think to one thing, right? That there is really such a thing as your personal palette. I know a lot of people. I do also sometimes think that there's no such a thing as personal palette because some people just don't have a very trained palette when it comes to not just wine but food as well. And it's not it's not a criticism because. It's a privilege to actually have a train power. I mean, you need to eat a lot, you need to travel a lot, and all of that. But when it comes to the higher quality wine, often when it comes to like this, like 92 to 96 point, 97 point wine, it has a lot, a lot to do with the individual like personal, business. personal preference. I would score, yeah. I would score. She's tougher than me. I would score a lot. Yeah. I would score all five of these a little bit higher than you did. But whatever. This was a lot of fun. I think we're gonna do more videos like this where uh, I give you the wines blind, you tell me everything like that, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I can visit a lot of wine after this. <laughs> so guys, so I can tell you got a little tipsy as we got down because you were sitting on the pillow up what? about my level and you gradually went down. So guys, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> we can do this more often. I hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel. So I'll see you at the next episode cheers hello thanks for watching hey you made it to the end make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel click the bell so you know when new videos are out if you like content like this check out our patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content thanks for watching cheers, cheers.